Hello, I'm Dr. Maura Lean from the School of Applied Social Studies at UCC, and I'm here to chat about the fascinating subject of gender stereotyping, what it is, why it matters, and what we can do about it. So, what is gender stereotyping? Well, basically, gender stereotyping refers to the expectations we have about how people should behave, how they should look, what they should work at, what names they should have, all based on their gender. And these expectations begin the minute we are born. We would be surprised, for example, if a baby boy was called Mary Ann or Beyonce and zipped into a pink fluffy baby grow. Because even though there is no law about what you should call a baby, we tend to go with boy names or girl names. And this stereotyping carries on in the activities that we encourage children to take up. More girls go to Irish dancing while boys head to rugby and boxing. We see it again in subject choice at school. Lots more boys do ag science, whilst girls do subjects like home economics. We see it in expectations about how women and men should be in the world. Women are expected to be soft and caring and emotional and possibly a bit unstable as a result, while men are expected to be rational and strong and therefore safe to put in control of things. So all of these examples show how we create gender stereotypes. And you might now be thinking, big deal, so what? Is there a problem with this? And I would say, yes, there are many problems with this. Firstly, it creates inequalities and it limits opportunities for both women and men. Take, for example, the gender pay gap. Research shows us again and again that even when they have the same qualification level and the same level of workplace experience, women are paid less than their male colleagues. There are a number of reasons, gender related reasons for this. Men are more likely to believe that they can do higher level jobs and so they apply for them more often than equally qualified women do. And there is extensive research which reveals that when the same CV is shown to employers, once with a male name on it and then at another stage with a female name on it, it is rated more highly when it's believed to be the CV of a man. And this is what we call unconscious bias. The employers are not trying to discriminate against women. They have just been socialised into believing that men are more able. Another reason why women find career progression harder is that they do most of the care work that happens in families. Mothers usually take a lot more time out to care for children than fathers do because, again, we are led to believe that women are better or more appropriate carers. And all of these factors, when you take them together, hinder women's progression in the labour mark. And the result is the gender pay gap. But in other areas, for example, health and well-being, gender stereotypes result in less positive outcomes for men. The self-belief and the risk taking that encourages men to apply for jobs that they, not, they might not be fully qualified for also leads them to take other risks, like speeding down the road after a few drinks, risks which result in higher rates of mortality, especially for young men. Expectations that they shouldn't be too emotional can stop men seeking help when they feel low, resulting in higher suicide rates for men. So I would say yes, gender stereotypes are a problem and a problem for all of us. And so to finish up, what can we do? What can we do to reduce these stereotypes? Firstly, we can become more aware of them and we can check in with ourselves and see how they might be shaping our behaviours. 
And if we aren't happy with the limitations they are putting on us, we can call them out and challenge them. Now, this isn't always easy, but it's worth having a shot. And it is through lots of small changes over time that we will begin to reduce gender stereotypes and the negative things associated with them. Thank you for listening.